talking about the environmental impacts of veganism versus a non-vegan diet. I talk about the environment a lot and I'm obviously a big um, fan of it, as everyone should be. Ever since I took an AP Environmental Science class junior year of high school, I was amazed at how much I didn't know. In short, that class was really inspiring but also really depressing because there's so much going on in this world and so much overuse of resources. It's insane and overwhelming. But there are things we can do to help. You know, use less water, take a shorter shower, recycle. <laughs> but also, your eating patterns can totally, totally affect your carbon footprint and just the environment in general. Before I start, um, I got a lot of these facts from various sources, so you can check the description if you want to read those yourself. It's all very interesting, so I would recommend it. And I can't guarantee that the exact figures in these facts are spot on. Some of the um, sources that I used are a couple years old, so of course it can be a little different. I'm just going to start with a quote by James Cameron, who said something like, you can't call yourself an environmentalist if you still eat meat. Basically what I got out of that is that the single most important thing you can do to help the planet is change your eating habits. Ideally you would be going vegan, but vegetarian helps a lot too, or just reducing the amount of meat and animal products that you eat. Another quote I have on here is, our biggest hope for widespread change lies in greening our meat for those who choose to eat it. So of course, it's not realistic to think that everyone would go vegan or vegetarian. But for people who still do eat meat, we have to change things anyway. Okay, here are some fun facts that are actually not very fun. Nearly half of all the water used in the United States goes to raising animals for food. Half of the water that we use? California's in a drought! And yes, a lot of that is due to the amount of farming and agriculture that goes on in this state. So that water is being used to grow the crops that the animals eat. So instead of, say for a vegan, growing crops using that water and then we eat them, you've got to grow a ton of crops so that the animals can eat them and get big and grown and then we eat them. It's just way more usage. A vegan diet requires 300 gallons of water per day, a meat-eating diet requires 4,000 gallons. And of course, that totally depends on the amount of meat you eat. It's just a generalized approximation, but still, it's crazy. Raising animals for food uses 30% of the Earth's land mass. That's roughly the size of Asia. Just raising animals for food. 30%? Another reason why all this is super important is that our population is still growing exponentially faster. Um, and by 2050, we're going to have, what, 10 billion people on the planet? We're not going to have any room for them, let alone resources and food and water. It's pretty crazy for us to be taking up that much room just for our livestock production. We're going to need it for people. Not to mention all the wild animals, but that's later. And the forests. More than 260 million acres of U.S. forest have been cleared to create cropland to grow grain to feed the animals. So once again, that's not even the land that the animals are taking up. That's just 260 million acres to grow the food for the animals. 70% of grain grown in the U.S. is not for us, it's for these farm animals. Crazy amounts. Apparently, going vegan brings greater environmental benefits than buying a hybrid or not showering for six months. The diet of meat eaters produces seven times the greenhouse emissions as the diet of vegans. Okay, greenhouse gases. So, some livestock animals, especially cows, produce methane. So, methane is 20 times more powerful at trapping heat in the atmosphere than carbon dioxide. So we're worried about our carbon emissions from driving and everything, but methane is 20 times worse than that. And chickens, turkeys, pigs, and cows are the largest producer of methane in the United States. Also nitrous oxide, it's 300 times more powerful than um, carbon dioxide at trapping heat in the atmosphere. And the meat, egg, and dairy industries produce 65% of the worldwide nitrous oxide emissions. I know this sounds like a bunch of crazy science and numbers. But that's insane. So you can see a trend here. Um, 
the resource usage and the water, the land. It's crazy and it's all from livestock production. And of course the United States is one of the heaviest meat eating countries in the world. And we can see that in the standard, you know, American meal. Some kind of meat protein is in the middle, a little side of veggies if you're lucky, and then some other stuff. But we are so centered around meat that there's no wonder that we're producing this much. Now they're fun fact, these are kind of in random order, I'm sorry. In 2006, so this is old news, it might be worse. I don't know. The United Nations said, raising animals for food generates more greenhouse gases than all the cars and trucks in the world combined. So, people worry about, you know, how much you're driving or how long your shower is. No, we should be worried about how much meat we're eating because it's way more of an impact. Americans eat 270 pounds of meat a year on average. Each American eats 270 pounds of meat. So as you can see from start to finish, it takes so much water to grow the food for the animals to eat. Then the animals grow up and then they get slaughtered. And then they have to be shipped, so that's fossil fuels, driving, CO2 emissions, and then we eat them. And not only is it terrible for the environment, but it's bad for your health. Having too much meat, especially red meat. Anyway, for you guys who are interested in going vegan, please keep researching it. Please keep asking me. If you're going vegetarian, if you are vegetarian, that's good. If you're trying to make the step from vegetarian to vegan, still, keep researching. Ask me. It's all good. Whatever you can do to help lessen this impact on the planet is a good thing. Some people think that they won't make a difference. They think that their one burger won't make a difference. Them eating some chicken won't make a difference, but over the course of a week, a month, a year, your entire lifetime, the amount of meat that you're eating totally makes a difference. But also I know that going vegan or vegetarian at this point is not an option for a lot of people or not even an interest. But the least you can do is lessen your meat intake. It'll be good for you, it'll be good for the planet, it'll be good all around. Um, a lot of people do meatless Mondays, which is a great thing. Just really think about it every time that you go to order something or you go to buy food somewhere. If you can make a choice that is meatless or without any animal products, that would be fantastic. Basically, I just love this planet and learning about environmental science and what we can do to help. We have messed up as humans so horrendously and the destruction that our actions have had is insane, but we can do things to help. So just stay informed, do your research, and try to make a difference every day. Thank you guys. Okay, thanks, bye.